What you're looking at out there is our adventure for the day. We just need to figure out how to get out there with all this water. Oh, I thought we were gonna swim. All right, all in favor of Dave's idea? Well, apparently Dave didn't get his way. Today's adventure brings us to the abandoned Fort Gorges on Hog Island Ledge in Casco Bay, Maine. It's over 156 years old. Wow. It's just on a little island. You have to take a private boat, kayak, or a water taxi to get out here. And we're here with our adventure team, Dave, Teeter, and Barry. Let's go. The fort is named after Sir Ferdinando Gorges, the first Lord Proprietor of Maine. Now as we head towards the Sally Port, there used to be a secure door here, and there was another one on the other side. You can see the hinges are still there in the granite. We also read that there was a moat and a drawbridge, sort of like a medieval castle, huh? Yeah, no kidding. And the gate that Dave's playing with? Those are not original. Nope, those were installed by the Army Corps of Engineers as part of the $500,000 hazard mitigation project back in 2017. Now as we continue to walk along, we're into the tunnel. You can see what looks like windows on either side. They are actually rifle ports. So if we were the enemy walking through here, the other side, we're being shot at right now. It becomes a tunnel of death. <laughs> All right, Barry, I didn't give you that many bullets. We are now standing in the middle of Fort Gorgeous, and as you can see, it's wide open here. There's no roof. <laughs> now, this fort was designed by Colonel Reuben Staples Smart. He actually lived on the island for seven years during the construction. And if we look at it from up above, it is a D-shaped fort, and it's modeled after Fort Sumter in South Carolina. Except instead of brick, Fort Gorges was constructed of granite. What a nice job those stone cutters did, huh? Just look at this. It is beautiful. And the granite comes from Mount Waldo. Hey, hon, where's Waldo? <laughs> it's in Frankfort, Maine, up in Bar Harbor. Ah, really showing off that New England accent, huh? <laughs> now, it was after the War of 1812 when the Army Corps of Engineers proposed for Fort Gorges to be constructed to help protect Portland Harbor along with the already existing Fort Preble and Fort Scammell. Yeah, but the construction of Fort Gorges wouldn't even begin until 1858. You know Congress. That's <laughs> when they passed the funding for it. And as for the layer of Fort Gorges, there are six sides. Five of those sides housed 56 10-inch Rodman guns between the first and second level. Now, just across the back, all they had was rifle ports. I assume they figured they would never really be attacked from behind on. <laughs> Speaking of the backside, let's go explore there first. Yeah, let's do that. Right there are two of the rifle ports on the back wall of the fort that we were talking about. And where are we? We're right here in one of the office's apartments. And check out the brick walls. They're covered with plaster. Yeah, these apartments even had fireplaces. And to the right of this one, that's the rifle port that Barry was shooting us from. And over the fireplace is a graffiti-covered painting of Four Gorges. I'm going to take a picture of it and see if I can't fix it. That's better. Look at that elegant architecture. If it was smoke, I'd be... Oh, wait a minute. Look what somebody did. See the holes? Oh, geez. Oh, uh, yeah. A spiral staircase? I'll wait for the real staircase. I'm sure that you can get in there. Yeah. Oh. That's some beautiful crown molding there. You can see how they got it wow. curved down? Yeah. We're now walking along the corridor of the first level. Check out the brickwork and the granite work. And look at those arches. I know the way they're all lined up, it's almost mesmerizing walking through here. <laughs> it is. <laughs> now, the fort was completed in 1865, just as the Civil War was ending. And there are 28 casemates located on this first level and another 28 on the level above us. What's a casemate and what are these lines and pegs in the floor? I'm glad you asked. Hi. <laughs> to my casemate. Now, right, Charles, we're going along. You can see this line down here. Every one of these casemates had a 10-inch Rodman gun in it, okay? What it would do is you could swivel it this way. That's what this track is. It would be metal down here. That coat was terrible. <laughs> And the way they'd be attached is the front of the gun would have a tongue that would go in here. And then once it was in, there's a pin it's still in here, actually. They would be dropped down to hold it in there so that they could get the gun however they wanted. Now, the way that it worked is you had the 10-inch Rodman gun right in there. There was two iron shutters that would be right up against it. When they fired it, the round would cause the shutters to open. As the round went through, the shutters would slam back. That way there, the fort was protected from return fire. So that's pretty cool, huh? Yes, and now, where did all that smoke and 
Yes, I'm um, smoking that after every explosion. We go right out this book right here. Just like on your fireplace. Now remember, we showed you where the officers lived with the nice fireplaces, the crown molding and all that. So where the enlisted live? Right here. Yes, they lived with their gun. These were being closed. They had doors, they had windows, they had a stove. And they lived with their gun. Now, I heard of sleeping with a gun close by, but it seems a little ridiculous, doesn't it? Yeah, do you think they slept on the gun? I don't really know. <laughs> now, where did I leave Dave? Hey, anyone seen Dave? Hey, Dave! Hey! Fancy me and you out here. Small world! <laughs> We're now headed into the powder magazine. This is where the gunpowder would have been stored. And look, if you're going to visit the fort and you want to see this section... Bring the flashlight! <laughs> yeah, because otherwise this is all you're going to see. Now, magazines usually had slits in the walls, and they are there to provide ventilation, such as these right here. The walls were also whitewashed, and that was to help with visibility. Yeah, in this room that we're in right now, it actually had two floors. But as you can see, the second floor is no longer with us. But just check out the size the floor joists used to be. Those were definitely meant to hold some weight. Yeah, and speaking of floors, the floors would have been made from wood with no metal nails exposed. Why? Sparks. What happens with sparks and gunpowder? The keeper of the fort. No, stop that fairy. Oh, that's <laughs> Actually, there's so much fog. Yeah, we're creating it too. And Barry found the grape magazine, which is just down from the powder magazine. And it is a great big room. <laughs> Alright, we have to come to a circular staircase, and there's a particular reason why it goes to the right while it's going up. It dates all the way back to medieval times in the castles. When the castle was being stormed, and people would be coming up with their swords. Most people are right-handed, mind you. So it's, it's coming up. See how Dave was able to swing off here? But Barry can't get a swing in because of the column here. Right, now the same thing would happen when they came up with rifles and bayonets. As he's advancing, again, right-handed, stop. Look at Dave can already see the bayonet, and the rifle. You know, my rocket's there. So he's ready in himself, so as soon as Barry comes around, boom. Bang, bang. So, with it going this way, coming down to defend the fort, you have the upper hand. Literally. <laughs> in case you're wondering why this fort's deserted, and when the last time it was used, well, it was designed for a garrison of three to 500 men, but only one man and his family ever lived here since it was completed, and he was the caretaker till 1916. Why a caretaker, you ask? Well, by the time the fort was completed in 1865, it was pretty much obsolete by then. And that was due to the new exploding munitions that would penetrate the granite walls of the fort. So it just sort of sat here in Casco Bay since 1865. And this is the kind of stuff we love to see. <laughs> we are now on level two, which is almost identical to level one. It has 28 casemates. But you can see most of the level is gated off for our protection. And now you see those cracks in the bricks right there? That's due in part to no drainage and the plant life that's above. It's dangerous and it could fall. So again, you're looking at part of the hazard mitigation project from 2017. It's designed to keep the fort open to the public, but also to keep us safe. By the way, the foundation slab right there in the middle of the parade grounds is not part of the original fort. That was a storehouse for anti-submarine mines and associated equipment, and it was constructed by the Army in 1897 and was used for storage all the way up through World War II. Check out the views we have from up here. Yeah, these are really nice. Oh, and in case you're wondering what happened to all the guns, well, they were removed and scrapped from the fort in 1898, and the only one remaining is quite the artifact dating all the way back to the Civil War days. It's a rare 300-pound, 10-inch Parrot rifle. Now, even though it was never mounted, the mount is right here for it. In 1960, the fort was acquired by Portland, and it was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1973. And we have a shout out going to Friends of Fort Gorgeous, which is a non-profit organization trying to save and restore the fort. We applaud them for their efforts because this place is definitely worth saving. It is. Take four. Team. <laughs> Fourteen. <laughs> <All> right. <clears throat> Straight face. <clears throat> 
Hi everyone, there you go. It was a great day to be out with the adventure team again. And what do you think of Fort Gorgeous? I think it's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. Now, if you guys liked the video, we'd appreciate that thumbs up as always. Want to follow along with everything we do on the We Are Mud Fun channel? Dave, where would that be? Hit that subscribe button right down there and ring the bell to be notified of future videos. If you have any questions or comments, where are they? They're right down below us. Or you can just say hi. Why, Tina? Because we'll say hi back. We always do. <laughs> Until our next video. The end. Bye. All right. <laughs> awesome. Hey Dave, you and Tina swimming back? Yeah. One way or another, I'm swimming. <laughs> Our taxi has arrived.